Why do the future Paradox Pokémon suck? In terms of both design and competitive use, I think most people would agree that the ancient Paradox Pokémon are way better than the future ones. The Paradox Pokémon have been legal in VGC formats ever since Series 2, which started in February of 2023, over a year ago. Fluttermane is undoubtedly the strongest among them all, with Roaring Moon, Great Tusk, and the three Paradox Beasts all seeing a lot of good use as well. Really the only good future Paradox Pokémon are Iron Hands and Iron Bundle, and maybe Iron Crown and Iron Moth. The rest are absolute garbage, and you might as well use a Spite Ops on your team over any of these Iron Jokes. But why are they so bad? What makes the future Paradox Pokémon so much worse than the ancient Paradox Pokémon? Let's start off with the most subjective part of their comparison, their design. The ancient Paradox Pokémon are almost all based on some kind of dinosaur, with the Paradox Beasts being the most apparent. Gouging Fire being a Styracosaurus, Raging Bolt being a Brontosaurus, and Walking Wake being some kind of theropod, maybe a Chindosaurus. My personal favorite design, though, has got to be Walking Wake. Something about its mane, legs, and tail just looks so fierce and strong. I also really like the alliterative name and just the Ancient Paradox Pokémon's names in general. On the other hand, the future Paradox Pokémon are all just robots, and not very interesting ones either. If you look at the origin section on Bulbapedia for any of the future Paradox Pokémon, the descriptions are all really lame, with Iron Leaves' origin description literally just being that it is based on Verizion. It also doesn't help that all of their names are just Iron Blank, and that all of their shinies are just chrome coloring on their bodies. Moving on to their competitive use, let's look at the typings and base stats. The future Paradox Pokémon get kinda screwed over on typing, especially when looking at the part Psychic type Iron Leaves and Iron Boulder, two of the three future Paradox Swords of Justice, compared to all three Ancient Paradox Beasts, which are part Dragon type. Since for the most part, Dragon dual typings are way better than Psychic dual typings. Other than that, there's Iron Moth and Iron Thorns, which both have a 4 times ground weakness. Smaller typing issues with the future Paradox Pokémon include Iron Bundle not having a consistent special water type move, Iron Jugulus not having a consistent special flying type move, Iron Treads not getting headlong rush even though Great Tusk does, and Iron Thorns not having a consistent physical rock type move. This is not to say that the Ancient Paradox Pokémon have no issues with their typing. In fact, Brute Bonnet, Slitherwing, and Roaring Moon all have 4 times weaknesses, but they make up for this in other ways with Brute Bonnet having great bulk and access to the move Spore, Slitherwing having great attack and decent bulk, and Roaring Moon having even better attack and a very good speed stat. The Ancient Paradox Pokémon all have pretty solid options when it comes to stab moves of their better attacking stat too, something that can't be said for all the future Paradox Pokémon. For base stats, all of the Paradox Pokémon either have a base stat total of 570 or 590, which is about the same as many legendary groups like the Forces of Nature or the Lunar Duo. Now, if you know anything about base stats, you know that having a high base stat total means nothing if those base stats aren't distributed well. An example of this is Florges, which has a very high base stat total of 552, but those stats aren't distributed very well at all. With that in mind, let's take a look at the base stat distributions of the Future Paradox Pokémon. Here are the average base stats of all 10 Future Paradox Pokémon compared to the 10 Ancient Paradox Pokémon. What you'll notice is that the future mons are faster with higher attacking stats, while the ancient mons are slower with better defensive stats. The ancient paradox Pokémon also tend to have more extremes in their stats as opposed to the future paradox Pokémon, which is a good thing as long as those extremes are not high in both attacking stats, so that the rest can be allocated towards speed or defenses. Examples of this include Fluttermane, which has a difference of 80 between its top 3 stats and bottom 3 stats, Roaring Moon, which has a difference of 84 between its attack and special attack, and Great Tusk, which has a difference of 78 between its attack and special attack. However, the biggest difference between the Ancient and Future Paradox Pokémon is in their abilities. All Ancient Paradox Pokémon have the ability Protosynthesis. This gives a boost to the user's highest stat if either the user is holding the booster energy item, or if the user is exposed to harsh sunlight. All Future Paradox Pokémon have the ability Cork Drive. This also gives a boost to the user's highest stat if the user is holding a booster energy, or if instead is exposed to electric terrain. Now, let's look at the possible ways to set up harsh sunlight. Torkoal is probably the best option since it gets the ability Drought, which sets up the sun without even using a turn. Ninetales also has this ability, but it is weaker overall since it doesn't get access to the very powerful fire-type move Eruption. Other decent options of setting up the sun include Prankster Sunny Day users, with Tornadus and Whimsicott being the best among them. Now, let's take a look at the possible ways to set up electric terrain. Pinkerton is a joke. It has the same speed as Slowbro, and the same base stat total as Tangela, 
With no good supporting moves, a terrible HP stat, and only okay-ish defenses, this thing has nothing to offer. I'm not even going to consider this as an option to set up Electric Terrain, so let's look at our options to set it up manually with a Prankster user. The only Prankster user that gets Electric Terrain is Thunderous, which is a very solid Pokemon, but it's also part Flying type, which means that it doesn't even benefit from Electric Terrain itself, unless it either terrestrializes or becomes grounded some way, since Flying types are not affected by Terrain. This is not an issue for Harsh Sunlight, because Weather does not have the stipulation of being grounded to receive its benefits. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I have not mentioned Maridon at all as an Electric Terrain setter. That is mostly because it has never been legal in any VGC formats, the formats I primarily follow and the official format for regional and world tournaments, so we can't actually use it. However, like every previous competitive Pokemon scene, Box Art Legendaries will be legal at one point, a format typically referred to as Restricted. I think that one of the reasons that there are no good and reliable Electric Terrain setters in Scarlet and Violet is because Maridon is so good that the future Paradox Pokemon may break the game in Restricted formats. I predict the future Paradox Pokemon to get significantly more use once Maridon is legal, since the only thing some of them are missing is a reliable Electric Terrain setter. Not only does Maridon set up Electric Terrain for 5 turns when it enters battle, which increases attack power of Electric moves by 30%, but it automatically gets a boost to its special attack as part of its ability. While not a big factor, it is worth mentioning that this boost is also slightly higher than the typical Cork Drive boost for stats other than speed at 33% instead of 30%. Since Maridon is an Electric type, its Electric moves that are already boosted by both Electric Terrain and Hadron Engine will also be boosted by Stat. With all these modifiers in place, Maridon will essentially have a 160% boost to its special Electric moves just by switching in. While the modifier for Harsh Sunlight increasing Fire type moves is higher at 50% instead of 30% for Terrain, Coridon isn't a Fire type so it doesn't get the extra Stab bonus that Maridon does. Other Electric-type future Paradox Pokémon like Iron Hands and Iron Thorns may see some more use because of this fact alone. Really, only time will tell though, since it's still way too early to predict what Pokémon will be good once the Restricted meta takes place. And that's why the future Paradox Pokémon are overall worse than the ancient Paradox Pokémon. Feel free to comment below if you disagree with any of my reasonings. And while you're down there, let me know what your favorite Paradox Pokémon is, both design-wise and competitively. Thanks for watching.